Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, college football fans across the nation and around the world. This is Tim May with the Tim May Podcast episode. I'm not sure what it is, but in Roman numerals, it would have a five in front of it. Uh, but I digress. Uh, you know, this is an interesting time in Big Ten football history. And to help help me break it down a little bit on where we've been, where we are, and maybe where we're going is my longtime friend, Angelique Chingelis from the Detroit News. Hello, Angelique. Hello, longtime friend, Tim. Yeah. Weird watching the Indy 500, wasn't it, this weekend? And not, yeah. very, not yeah. being like the old days, because we go back, we go way back to racing and college football. I know that's what that's what continues to stun me about about me knowing you. I've known you for over uh, for at least thirty five Indy five hundreds, but you're only twenty eight. So, <laughs> well, yeah. I'm just, I don't. I get confused. You know, I'm sixty six now. I get confused easily. But uh, <laughs> hey, Angelique, it was it was before we get into Big Ten football. Kevin Warren, Ohio State, uh, Michigan, and all those people. Uh, uh, it was very eerie. At, at Indianapolis Motor Speedway with no crowd there uh, and just the, you know, the media. And, and of course, it looked like there were probably 500 to a, maybe a thousand, you know, guests of the teams, uh, right. co-owners, you know, that all goes sponsors, et cetera. But they were even kept pretty much uh, apart and uh, had a, a, what I, a Thunderbirds flyover, you know, and uh, I don't know how many people there finally were outside the facility, mm -hmm. but it was a, it was a big number. And uh, so people wanted to be there. People probably could have been there because um, me and my buddy, you know, Bruce Martin, we uh, went to dinner at St. Elmo's on Saturday night, saw Bobby Ray all there, ironically. And then he, I told him I thought Takuma Sato had a great chance to win the race. And if not him, Graham, because they both had good cars. That shows you how smart I am. I still got the touch. Well, yeah, you are. The smart. But after that, but after that, we went out to Lucas Oil Raceway just to hang out a minute because they had a crowd. They must have had, it looked like eight or 10,000 people there. Wow, you know, Lucas, you know what I'm talking about—the the yeah. little short track west of Indy—and uh, and you're just going, why aren't there going to be, why aren't there going to be sixty or eighty thousand people at Indy on Sunday? It made no—they could have put them in the covered grandstands, but but they opted. They got, you know, they got their advice and they went with it. You know, Roger Penske, uh, first uh, Indy 500 in Roger Penske realm, nobody there. You know, the first Big Ten football season. Uh, well, actually, no, this would be – yeah, Kevin Warren took over officially when? I this believe be, it was June 1st of last year. Of last year. So this would be his second football season. And let uh, me ask you something, Tim. Have you ever spoken to him as commissioner of the Big Ten? I, I shook his hand and said, and said hi to him uh, in at the Big Ten meetings last last summer, you know. but Yeah, I mean, I know we're going to get into all this, but I, I've got to say that's that's been a, a thing for me is that – as Big Ten reporters, we haven't had a chance to talk to the Big Ten commissioner. I mean, uh, you know, a, a Zoom call. Unless, unless you're somebody really important. Well, right. I mean, he goes to his three or four go-to national reporters, and, you know, I get it. They have uh, they can share his message, but it, it would be nice to have a roundtable of Big Ten beat writers, uh, television reporters, whoever, just to be able to ask questions specific to the schools we cover. Yeah. You know, it's funny because uh, when Urban Meyer first took the job at Ohio State, when they, two weeks later, when they came down with a ruling that Ohio State was going to have to sit out uh, bowl season the next year and lose these scholarships, uh, he talked to a couple of his uh, friends, you know, from the national media right after that, uh, but none of us. And so I called him at home and he, and he had his pink contract and he goes, you know, Tim, I'm not, I'm not doing these things, you know, I'm not, and I, I go, and I basically tell him, Urban, you, you got to talk you got to talk to the local media about this. You right. can't just be, you know, and he understood and he got it right away. And from then on, it was no problem. But yeah, Kevin Warren, I mean, I, I forgot that first interview he did. Was it Business Insider or something yes. like that? And I'm going, yeah. what? What are, you, what are you doing here? Who's giving you advice? I mean, what's going on here? You're not even addressing the media that covers the league on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, so that doesn't endear him with anyone if you follow no. my drift. It so, doesn't. And yeah. right now, you know, you've got these, uh, you know, Sean Wade's dad, Randy Wade, led that protest, if in fact you want to call it that, march or, or hang out at the Big Ten uh, uh, headquarters the other day, uh, last Friday in, in uh, Chicago, right outside Chicago. And I, I think Kevin Warren wasn't even there because mm -hmm. I'm under the impression he's been sort of working from his home in Minneapolis, right, or, or right. Minnesota. So, uh, but who knows where he is, right? 
I mean, like Roger Federer is standing right behind you, you know, and tennis fans think he's in training. So, <laughs> but I digress. I mean, people, the people who are just can't see this on video, she has a big cutout of Roger Federer looking over her left, my right shoulder. But, uh, but I digress. Angelique, so what do we make of this? Let's, before we talk about Kevin Warren in detail, yeah. uh, how upset are football fans, football coaches, football players at Michigan that the season has been, quotes, postponed, end quotes, to a winter spring? Well, I, I think that um, they had about 90 football families, Michigan football families, on this letter that they sent out a week ago um, last Monday. And, um, you know, I think that there's still there are a couple families who are a little hesitant. And, you know, again, there, there's been no – um, no bullying from the, any of these families saying, oh, you got to be with us or not. I think everybody's been very understanding from the get-go. Yeah. Even players just saying, look, if you don't feel comfortable, sit out. No one's going to question any of that. But, yes, to your point, I, I, I mean, I've talked to quite a few players, Tim, and, and the ones I've talked to are upset that they're not playing. And um, I know one of the, the players' fathers I've talked to quite a bit is a guy I covered the first year I covered the team. Um, in 1992, Chris Hutchinson, he was an All-American. I know it was way back. And, you know, he was the captain of the team, and he's an emergency room physician. And, you know, he's the guy I've talked to since really, you know, he's at the biggest hospital in Michigan in, yeah. in April. And he's been very consistent with this. And he does the research every day, and he really wants to look at the data, the medical data, that the Big Ten looked at because he's someone who can digest it and understand it and and determine what what was their decision making process, what informed this decision, and and that's what they're looking for. I think we all agree the play, parents just want some answers. Yeah, you know, I've been told by very good sources within that community that uh, that if in fact if Kevin Warren had said flat out that we're doing this purely because of the medical aspect of things, that some many of the medical people in the Big Ten who were trying to help give advice were going to rise up and go, wait a minute, you know, that's mm -hmm. not exactly the way we, that was not exactly the, the way we put it, you know, in any in any kind of like talking we did with you. So, uh, you know, uh, and of course, you know, Ohio State fans, I mean, you know, the Ohio State um, Parents Association sent the, sent the letter, just like uh, I think Iowa's did, right? Yeah. Uh, Nebraska. I think Penn State's in Nebraska. And I think Illinois jumped in. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, and Illinois finally. Uh, you know, you almost got a you almost got a voting quorum there. Almost got a voting <laughs> quorum. I would think Minnesota would. If you look at the AP preseason poll, Minnesota's ranked nineteenth. This is their best yeah. se best team in whatever, you know, and uh <laughs> they would definitely like to see the, the season play out. So you would think, you know, you I'm not think, gonna put right. words in anyone's mouth. But you know what, Angelique, I was talking about this on my podcast last week. If the parents give their permission, if protocol is followed, followed and yeah. stuff, the parents give their permission <clears throat> to play that game. If right. the players want to play the game, if the coaches are ready and the support personnel at the schools and the medical personnel at the schools, you know, sticking with protocols. I mean, it's always based on sticking with protocols that you don't let things get too crazy. Why are they not playing? I mean, what 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 is the permission you're seeking? And, uh, <clears throat> you know, is it about liability? Are you, are you worried about liability? Uh, are, you, are you worried about kind of caving to um, not the mob? Because this isn't the mob. This is a, uh, as uh, they said, in, oh, oh, Brother Art, now this is a constituency. <laughs> this is your constituency. I mean, the, the players, the players' parents, the coaches, the, uh, the, the, the training and medical personnel, the league, et cetera, so who are you looking at? I mean, who are you, who are you leaning on? Is you know, and I go back to that. I mean, because you and I both had the same quandary when we were texting back and forth the other day, and uh, when I wasn't going off on a tangent like I always do. But <laughs> who who do you think he's looking at? Would that be the first question you'd ask him, Kevin Warren? Yeah, yeah. and I think he was totally. Um, you know, I think it was. I don't think the athletic directors. They, you know, what was the, the Hamilton room where it happened? I don't think they were in the room where it happened, Tim. I think we're, we're getting that. And I think we're also hearing. Wait, from, wait, let me interrupt you. You mean the Zoom room where it happened? <laughs> yes, the Zoom room <laughs> where it happened. And look, I think the athletic directors we've heard from 
were probably aligned more with their presidents and yeah. like Gene Smith and, and the incoming president of Ohio State. Um, I think the athletic directors who are staying quiet probably, you know, don't want to ruffle feathers because they probably didn't agree with the decision, uh, how the, the process was and how their presidents voted if there was a vote. Vote. And, um, but yeah, I, I want to know, you know, why even bother? Why, why have this, um, this, this farce that the athletic directors have anything to say, you know, those guys met a hundred times. They had their plan. They were meeting every day. It seemed like yep. um, two or three times a week sometimes. Yeah. And so, I mean, are you not giving athletic directors a say? And I went back and I was looking at some uh, interviews I'd done with Bo Schembechler, you know, 17, 18 years ago, Tim. I mean, and, and he was beating the drum then that the presidents were the worst thing that happened to uh, college football, and he took it further and said that anybody who was a, a president who'd gone on to become the head of the NCAA was a, that was a huge disaster for college athletics. And <laughs> again, I, I'm not saying that the, the yep. decision they reached was wrong. It's just how did they reach it? And you know, was there a vote? Did you have your medical experts on this this task force that Kevin Warren had? Did they vote? And uh, I'm not sure. I don't understand why the lack of transparency here. I mean, well, just yeah. Lay one, it of my best, there. one of my best friends is Jeff Snook, and uh, mm -hmm. Jeff had a really, you know, he had the one he went, had the one story that everybody uh, kind of got up in arms about, and he just used the wrong uh, the wrong time element. And it should have been was not is as as in you know Gene Smith and some of these ads sort of like looked at could you figure out a way to just, you know, several teams still play in the fall? Because mm -hmm. everything's geared for the fall. The right. whole calendar's right. geared for the fall. I mean, just think, to think you can push things back to February. I mean, I mean, it's, you know, yeah, there'll be a plan for it. But are you kidding me? You're mm -hmm. going to play six or eight games in the spring? I mean, what, right. what, what are we talking about? What, what does that even mean, you know? But, uh, but I digress. Go back to what I was saying. He wrote an earlier story where he outlined from an incredibly credible source – how the sort of the last uh, Zoom meeting with the presidents went with Kevin Warren. And uh, there were, some, I mean, Christina Johnson, the incoming president at Ohio State, she and Gene Smith were for, hey, you built these buffers into this season schedule that you released five days ago. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's exercise that. We have five, four or five weeks. You could push the start of the season back to October right. if right. you wanted Start the preseason pre camps in September. After schools have reopened, you've mm -hmm. seen what kind of influence that has had on the COVID-19 testing, et cetera. Whether your school can handle COVID-19 testing and football athletic testing, you know. But the way he put it in his story was, uh, looking back on it in retrospect, it was kind of like Kevin Warren was sort of steering the initiative to where he wanted it to go, which was mm -hmm. postpone the season. Now – Guys are, guys are hired to make decisions. Mm. And uh, I likened it uh, several times when, you know, when I'm always looking for the stupidest analogy I can find uh, to uh, a bus driver driving a bus down a Chilean switchback road, down Chilean switchback road in the Andes. And over here's a thousand foot drop and up over here's the side of the mountain. And the brakes are a little bit iffy and you got 50, 50 people in the back screaming all kinds of things at you and probably singing, you know, and you're trying to steer this bus down these switchback roads without going over the cliff and without hitting the mountain. And that's sort of where Kevin Warren, that's where I put him in that driver's seat mm -hmm. of that bus. So it's not an easy move at all. Ohio State was about to start padded practices. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, they were, they were, they should have been cleared to start padded practices on that right. Tuesday when all of a sudden he canceled it. So I can see the idea of you you postpone now at them because you don't want guys going into padded practices, you know, and that's when the real jeopardy starts. Right, right. And then suddenly a week later, hey, uh, we changed our mind. I have changed my mind, Jethro mm -hmm. Bodine. But uh, <laughs> so I get, I, 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 well, every time I talk, I have 14 either TV or shows or movies running in my head at the same time, <laughs> Angelique. You know that. Know that. You know, <laughs> Top Gun would be the number one one. And Austin Powers, but I digress. Yes, well, Austin is, Powers. So you can understand, I can empathize with his plight. Mm -hmm. But what you can't empathize with is announcing a schedule and saying, even when you announce it, hey, there's a good chance we may not do this, right. but then five days later. So that's what right. we want to know is what changed 
in those five days, it just made you go, oh my goodness, we got to, we got to stop. And so far, except for maybe getting extremely concerned about this cardiomyopathy, myocarditis situation, there was not really anything else that really popped up. You know, and you find out today, I mean, Texas Christian quarterback, you know, he had his heart looked at during these things and found out he had a congenital condition mm-hmm. he didn't even know he had. Mm-hmm. You know, that, uh, uh, so there is some benefit from that whole deal, but they're going ahead and go ahead and play in the Big 12 as we speak right now. Uh, SEC is plowing ahead, even though, for example, uh, Vanderbilt had to step back, you know, uh, right, recently. Right. Uh, ACC, last we heard, they're still playing, even though UNC is doing, you know, uh, campus online or whatever they're calling it. I'm sure they're figuring out some way to have online campus but still charge you for being there. <laughs> but here we sit in the Big Ten, there was not even an attempt to get to that aspect of the season. Right. Right. And I thought they would, Tim. I mean, I remember um, maybe you were polled in this thing, Lexington Herald later in April. And I went back and looked to see what I had said because I, I was being pretty consistent in April. I thought that there would be no, it would be a conference only schedule. And I said, start in mid March. I mean, pardon me, mid October. Cause I thought that was reasonable. You know, you giving, yeah. giving yourself a time to navigate what's going on with, with this virus at that point. And um, I, but I agree with you. I mean, the biggest thing is why release the schedule six days later, pull the plug I mean, what happened? I mean, if you listen, I mean, I've quoted Chris Hutchinson several times. I mean, he thinks, and again, he's a physician. He's looked at the myocarditis, um, all the data, and he thinks it was just some, it it was trumped up. You know, it was just something that was, he doesn't think is as substantial a risk. And, And that's his perspective. Obviously, other people have that, have different perspectives. But his whole point was, Tim, that he, his, his son had a better chance of getting two concussions this season versus right. something very serious from this virus. And um, I mean, I have a friend who recently had it, was diagnosed and had a couple tough days and, and now he's through it, thankfully. So obviously different people are, are having issues with it in different ways and you have to be cautious. But I, I thought that the, the protocols at Michigan, I'm sure are similar to what Ohio State was doing. Yeah. They were really, I, I mean, every time I talk to a player, in an interview in the evening, I'm like, um, so are you going out? And they, they kind of like laughed at me like, um, yeah, we go once a week to Bush's grocery store. That's pretty much all they were doing. They were being vigilant. And, um, you know, and it's a shame. It, it's a shame that they didn't get a chance to at least maybe pause and just wait a little bit and start the season a little bit later. I just don't understand what was the rush to pull the plug? And that would be my, my first question. And I know Dave Revson tried to ask him that or did ask him that, Tim, and, and Kevin Warren just didn't, didn't answer. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure pull the plug is the right term. I know. It's, it's more like put on an extra extension cord. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you want to see my – you want to see I'm, I'm running, I'm running right. out to my fence like, like 80 yards in front of my house. I run low – extension cords out there every Christmas. And <laughs> the last thing I want to do is take the lights down every year. Cause I've got like, you know, no but, cause running an extension is a pain in the butt. And that's what we're looking <laughs> yes, at right it now. It's like, what are we talking? You know, it's like spring, but, but let's get back to one other thing. Uh, yep. What did you think at least about, I don't know if you call it an uprising. What would you call it? That, that college athlete unity uh, mm-hmm. treatise came out and, uh, and then Ohio State, you know, the athletes at Ohio State put out their own treatise. But basically, it was kind of like saying, you know, we're not so sure about this thing, but this is where we stand. We've been extremely uh, happy uh, and confident with the program that Ohio State has laid out for us, not just football, but other sports. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and it's kind of like not so much being elite, but they just feel like they have done what they have done what what they were supposed to do and deserved a chance to play. Michigan right. players think the same way. I think Penn State players think the same way. We know Iowa, we know what Nebraska, you know. Nebraska, right. I think Nebraska got threatened with getting thrown out of the league, you know. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, our Western Outpost would now move back to Iowa City. But uh, that's another another podcast for another day. Uh, but, but the bottom line is, uh, so they feel – I don't know if betrayed. What, what, you know, what, what's the word you would use to feel, to, to explain how they kind of feel about this? Because they know spring season is, is 
kind of stupid in, 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 in all kinds of ways uh, from the standpoint of, you know, we just saw the, uh, as we talk here today on a Monday, we saw where the uh, college football playoff put out its, uh, right. its, its press release saying that they're going to go ahead with their rankings starting in October. I think it's first of October, or I think either late October, early November. Their last rankings are going to be no, uh, right. December, December the 20th when probably the Big Ten championship game would have been kicked back to. The uh, SEC has already scheduled their, I think, their championship game for that week, if I'm not mistaken, that weekend. Uh, so the train is moving on without, mm-hmm. you know, the two cars that are the Big Ten and the uh, Pac-12. And so everybody, you know, Austin Peace are starting its season against, what, Nickel State this coming weekend. Mm-hmm. Austin P is playing football, Angelique. The Bearcats that, are playing football still, right? My Bearcats. You remember, you remember that lineman Fly Williams played for uh, Austin P. Flies <laughs> open, let's go P. But I digress. This is a podcast, by the way. But uh, but yeah, I mean, there are people playing. I was over in Indiana, you know, Friday night uh, in Indianapolis. They showed highlights from the opening week of games. A couple of schools had to cancel because of some positive tests, but they played football. Uh, they're going to play football in Ohio high schools, I think, starting this weekend. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? I don't know what they're doing in Michigan. Are they playing high school football? They're not? Nope. nope so there you go. Playing. There's your mixed messages. Uh, so what we're going back to here is, uh, as Kevin Warren kind of painted himself into a corner in his first year and a half as the commissioner of the Big Ten. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I think, you know, he's – this is not a great look. And I think even people who have been supportive of, of his message, you know, some of the national writers, um, they've all said this has sort of been a PR disaster. And it, and it really has been. We always talk about when a coach gets hired, did he win the press conference? And I mean, this is, there's, I mean, he absolutely won his initial press conference, but this has been really just a debacle. And I go back again to what I said at the start, Tim, I mean, why does he talk to any any beat writers? I mean, Jim Delaney every pre, every Big Ten uh, uh, media day, you know, he would talk, and then there were other opportunities to, to speak to Jim Delaney, and and I think that's been a really bad uh, it's bad optics, as they say, right? Bad optics. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, I I just you know now you've got you've got uh, Tom Mars is out there. He's filing FOIA. You know, he's the attorney who worked with Justin Fields and Shea Patterson at Michigan. He's out there yeah. filing FOIAs. And, and he's going to be relentless. So, you know, I don't know what that's going to turn up. We'll find out. But is this, he, this could have been avoided is my point. And yeah. so, I mean, you don't make a, a two day story into a 15, 16, 17, you know, extended story. And, um, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what this does for him. Maybe the presidents are happy with it. I don't know. But let me, let me tell you, if the SEC ends up playing. And, and by the way, they haven't played a game yet. I keep reminding people that. SEC, right. ACC and Big Big 12, you know, right now they're fi- they're flying high, it, but they have yet to play. But if they end up playing, the SEC especially, uh, and they get into October and they're still playing, you know, this is not going away for Kevin Warren, if you follow mm-hmm. my draft. Mm-hmm. And my point ke- continues to be sort of what, what – what Gene Smith and Christina Johnson were pushing from all the Ohio State side was, you know, you've, you've, you've built this buffer in, why not use it? Why not use it? Why the urgency? What, what is, what is just scared you to death that makes you want to, um, in essence, unilaterally, you know, he might have had some backing. I'm, he probably got backing from Rutgers. Who knows? Cause they've had their problems over. Right. Right. Yeah, right. The COVID-19 thing, but you don't, but do you let Rutgers or do you let, any other school, Maryland, and I'm not saying that happened, but do you let them decide whether everybody else gets to play or not, you know, mm-hmm. based on 14 members? You know, Urban Byer said on my podcast quite a few uh, weeks ago that this could be survival of the fittest in college football. I mean, the teams that can play probably will play or should play. And yeah. the teams that can't maybe sit it out, just like you're seeing in high school right now in Ohio. That's what they're doing. Uh, but – you know, to, to make everybody sit out, you know, because of uh, just some pop-up uh, situations you heard or, or, or maybe just getting – I'm not going to say half the story because I don't think Kevin Warren is stupid by any stretch, mm-hmm. by any stretch. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you are who you listen to. 
And that's what, that's what bothers you about this. But, but what I'm getting to here is we have Penn State parents, you have Ohio State parents, you have Michigan parents, Iowa parents, Nebraska parents. Those five schools decided, you know, which, by the way, you know, the, the scuttlebutt was, was that there was some talking between these schools about possibly still trying to play in the fall some type of like schedule. And, of course, that got quashed by mm-hmm. Kevin Warren when he, you know, basically, uh, I know he, I, I'm under the impression he had an, an, a conversation with Gene Smith about it when, when he saw like Ryan Day's reaction to the initial uh, uh, cancellation or, excuse me, postponement announcement. Ryan Day said they were, you know, would look into a lot. Right. Into a lot of things, maybe a, a chance to still play. He didn't mean they were going to run off and join the big, big crowd. Right. I mean, right. people went nuts with that. You know, that's not going to. But you know, you've really rankled a hell of a voting block, in my opinion. But it's not just a hell of a voting block, but it's sort of the muscle beach aspect of the voting block. Mm-hmm. But they've gone along with it. You know, mm-hmm. how long will people go along? You know, to get along. <laughs> You know, that are, that, you know, because, you know, if Ohio State and Penn State and Michigan flex their muscle, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying the Michigan president was that way, because I under, I'm not sure how that goes with the president there, but uh, uh, if they had flexed their muscle big time, would we be looking at covering fall camps right now? What do you think? Well, I mean, Michigan's president, Mark Schlissel, is an immunologist, and Michigan right. State also has, you know, I, I, I think it's probably fair to say that they were probably all for not playing. It's my hunch. Again, no yeah. one. Them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, you haven't been told, right? That's the. No, no I mean, and, and I keep bringing up Chris Hutchinson, but I thought he made a good point, too. I mean, he's got a son who's a junior. This was a big year for him in terms of his NFL future. And he's just like, look, I, I, no one's guaranteeing there's a, a fall season 2021. He goes, no one knows where COVID's going to be then. Uh, you know, all the research he's read, Tim, is that there will be a, va- a vaccine at the start of the year, but it's not going to be available for the masses, not for football players, not for you and me. I mean, for people who really need it, it will be there. Yeah. And so he's like, what am I going to tell my kid? You know, if there's no spring, you know, if that doesn't come off, uh, are you waiting around for a, a fall? And he's like, look, I, as much as I love Michigan and I love my kid being at Michigan, I'm going to transfer if that's what it takes for, so he can play. And so I think that I, I, they have to hear the noise, right? The Big Ten yeah. office has to hear the, and they, and I know that you can't, they're not going to say, okay, let's let the parents make the decisions here. But I, I just get the sense that they didn't they didn't weigh all the considerations here. But we don't know. I mean, maybe they did. Tim, but again, it's just why not be a little more open about this yeah. and answer some of these questions. And um, I, I just, again, I just find it very frustrating that he picked up the phone, that Kevin Warren picked up the phone and called a couple of reporters who got his message out and probably were satisfied with that. And, you know, I, I've got questions. You've got questions. I mean, they're sp- specific to the programs we cover and to the league as a whole that should be answered. And, and I, you know, for anybody who says the parents are entitled and Sean White, you know, yeah, they are entitled. Yeah. Maybe you, might, you might consider them entitled parents, but they're entitled to some answers too because this is their son. I mean, a lot of these guys are going on to the NFL. This is their. This is what college is. It's for education and, and getting you prepared for your future. Well, some of them, the future is prof- professional football. So, uh, you know, yeah. I, I think they need some answers. We need some answers. And um, – I just really want to know when, what really went into this. Because I'm tired of, was there a vote? No, it was a consensus. What was it? Just tell us. It's not that, I don't think it's that harmful for them if they told us. Give me, give me before we go, give me a, an insight on, you know, we haven't even seen, you know, maybe Kevin Warren, you know, like you were talking about, there's a possibility of him having a Zoom call or something with, with uh, players, coaches, officials, whatever, uh, today or tomorrow, um, you know, maybe he's going to lay out what the plans are for the fall and the spring. But give me a sense of the appetite for a spring season. Uh, let's, you know, at Michigan, I'm, I, you know, Ohio State, same idea. Uh, there might be six or eight games. What, what, what would be accomplished? Who would play? Who would sit out? I mean, you know, if the NFL draft doesn't move, Justin Fields and Sean Wade, for example, uh, Maybe a couple of those really great linemen at Ohio State this this year. 
Josh Myers and Wyatt Davis would probably have to make a decision about mm-hmm. playing. Um, who? I, what would you get out of that, out of a season like that, except for calling it just an extended spring football session, which is, right. you know, uh, instead of playing each other, playing with, within the – Within the uh, team, there you play six or eight games just to kind of keep playing football. But right. that's pretty much you'd be a glorified spring training, right? Or yeah, it would be. It'd be great for the younger players. Again, it's those upperclassmen. Yeah. Michigan's already had two players bolt: Ambry Thomas and Jalen Mayfield. I mean, yeah. right in the cornerback, and and I think that's why. I mean, I think you're going to see these guys. I, I I would imagine Ryan Day. Well, from what I've heard, is that he's pushing for a January start. You know, get this going, and. You know, that way maybe you do hang on to some of these guys. You get the season done before uh, the combine. I think I wrote about this last week, Tim, that I thought it was a really clever idea. Talked to a few more parents, and they said, you know, Harbaugh was ready with plan B. You know, so if they were going to stop, you know, he was ready. And he's got this combine set up. And these guys, just to keep them interested, four days a week, they've got a, a schedule, and they're working on combine-specific drills. And then October 24th, the day Michigan was supposed to play, Ohio State in the revised schedule, they're doing something at Michigan Stadium. And again, it'll probably depend on what the governor's, what the, what's going on in the state at that point. But his intention is to have NFL scouts there timing, doing an, a, a combine, an NFL yeah. combine. Cool. So the guys who, who are on, that, on the fence about, you know, would they play, they'll have their measurables in, NFL scouts would talk to them. And then they can play football and get some film. So, you know, maybe it's not a real season, but things real this year, it seems like. So uh, I think that's an option. Uh, yeah. A couple coaches who have, you know, we saw Jeff Brahms plan. I talked to another coach who had a plan that started a little bit later and, and you have the Pac-12 and the Big Ten champion facing off in the Rose Bowl. It's kind of a, you know, kind of, it's, it's interesting to see these coaches thinking out of the box. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I was always against the spring season because I don't think you can play two game, two seasons in a calendar year like Urban, I know, has been touting. But I asked a couple players, and they said they feel like they could do – they could handle it physically if it's yeah. not, you know, two 12-game seasons. Yeah, as long as things are altered a little bit, you know, from a training standpoint. Like I said, to me, it would be just an extended spring, spring practice is what I would look at it as because you're not playing for – you might be playing for a Big Ten championship and a chance to go to the – other oh, Rose Bowl or the what would they have to call it there the uh, the climbing Rose Bowl or the, the COVID Bowl yeah the yeah you know, the COVID Rose Bowl yeah <laughs> the yeah you know, the COVID Bowl <laughs> it reminds me of the remember they used to play the toilet bowl in Flushing New York but I digress <laughs> that's a great joke from a long time ago right but uh but yeah they called the COVID Bowl and uh, you know maybe shoot my, when I played in Beijing you know what the heck but uh. But I digress also again. Uh, but, yeah, you're right. I mean, I'm just uh, – I, 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 you you got to have something to play for to play, the way I look at it. Yeah, I mean, to really right. – because, I mean, you know, spring games, for example, most of the time, at least Ohio State, the stars may – you know, the coming back veterans play like one series and they're out. Right. You know, they already right. know what they can do. Uh, so, how you keep people – how you keep fans interested, how you – you know, the networks probably jump at it because they get a hell of a lot better numbers sure. than the XFL got. You know what I mean? Do you think athletic directors would jump at it? They need to recoup the money they're going to well, lose. Yeah. I mean, they're, I mean, but you know what? People make fun of that. But that's part and parcel to what college sports is anymore. You know, hey, people grow up. That's making money, uh, generating revenue is what it's all about. That's what NIL is about, name, image, mm-hmm. and likeness, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what it's about now. We've, we've moved on from the 70s, you know, and the mm-hmm. 80s. In the 90s, in the 2000s, uh, in the 2010s. Uh, but I digress. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just curious about how they would set it up uh, and wh- whether, like I said, the big-time players would still play because what are you really playing for? A chance to, a chance to meet uh, USC, like mm-hmm. we said, in the COVID-19 bowl, you know, you know, whatever floats your boat, I guess. But I, I don't see that generating as much – interest as maybe some people do, but I'm sure they'll drum it up. And, and, uh, but it's pretty much, if you're going to push it back to the spring, like your Dr. Hutchinson said, you know, is there going to be a vaccine by then? What's going to change that makes you feel better about these guys playing in January instead of October? 
Well, That's I think the there's, you know, I think that was the other part of people wondering why they pulled the plug so early is the saliva testing news coming out. I think that if there is a way to do more rapid testing with quick results, I, I think then you can pull off a spring um, and, and then obviously uh, a fall season. Again, if we're assuming that vaccine is not going to be available to everyone and testing is still going to be imperative. So um, that's the way I think that's the, probably because the, I've wondered too, like what, what's going to be different by January. And yeah. uh, so it might be that, because I think that that is changing rapidly. Um, the testing, but, but what, what, what's interesting there too is, you know, in that, in that when they an announced the schedule for the fall, you know, with mm -hmm. all the buffers built in, they also said they were going to go to a third party testing situation, you know, right. two times a week, uh, which ensures number one, that you're getting uh, impartial results. So you, you can't say quarterback A has COVID right. when in fact he has a sprained ankle, you know, which is right, right. why you can't play that week, you know. <laughs> but, but we've just seen a great example this week of uh, false positives coming out of that yes. uh, testing yes. uh, facility in New Jersey, I think it was, and uh, across the NFL, which gave, gave everybody's heart a Twitter and uh, then they found false positive. So, so how do you know something's not a false negative? But, you know, we just go on and on from there. But the way I understood it, the Big Ten talked about that third party, but still hadn't lined it up. Mm -hmm. you know? so, mm -hmm. so, yeah, there are all these, all these hurdles to go through, whether you play October, November, December, January, or February, until that seven-letter word vaccine comes along, you know. And at least then you feel some confidence when you're, you know, but – I'm not sure people were going to get necessarily COVID-19 from playing against each other on Saturdays. And so if you're, well, keeping, if you're keeping things straight during right, the week. Right. That's been my point, too. Yeah. yeah I mean, they're, if everybody's on the up and up and they're staying, they're testing and, and they're sort of staying in their mini bubbles, then, yeah, I agree with you. I guess the thing, too, that confounds me, Tim, is that why – I mean, it was just all so compressed there at the end, which we mentioned the schedule being released and the schedule, everything being canceled. Is There was a pretty large gap of time from mid-March when everything was suspended to now. There you like, go. Like, the, I mean, I know it's hard when you're on a committee and you've got all these voices, but I'm just, I just can't get over how poorly organized this all seemed. Well, let me, let me go, let's jump in there real quick before we go. Mm -hmm. The athletic directors, like you said, were meeting sometimes daily during during right, the I know right. Dean Smith talked about all the comp Zoom calls he was on. You know, he ought to mm -hmm. have stock in Zoom at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, but you know, it, it, you get the idea the presidents weren't really in the loop, and uh, the presidents, you know, and I'm just guessing here based on what I've been here heard. The presidents kind of got in on at the last moment because let's face it, I had Jim Trussell on my podcast. You know, he's the president of Youngstown State. He was yeah. concerned about Youngstown State, not Youngstown State football necessarily, although he's concerned about that too, but they're more worried. They were more concerned about their campuses being able to open. What's going on with that? I mean, that's a much bigger, you know, that's a much bigger uh, kettle of fish than football, but football is the most visible thing that almost happens on your campus. And yeah. so yeah. I think they got caught giving, giving it short shrift and then trying to play catch up and then like I said, you know, Kevin Warren had his doubts about the season. And so whether there was a consensus, whether there was a vote, I'm doing mm -hmm. a, a quote size for people who are just listening. Uh, who knows? But I, I think they may, like you just said, the presidents might have been, maybe should have had consultation, but maybe should have been the athletic directors who have been on top of this all along, who made the final call, like like Sankey, you know, the uh, commissioner of the uh, – of oh, the SEC, I mean, they've, they've built all this in. They're waiting until September the 26th to start their right. season. Right. They just start their preseason camp until last week. And, you know, I'm not saying, you know, holding the SEC up one way or the other, because like I said, they haven't played a game yet. But like he said, the key word there was patience, mm -hmm. you know, because every day changes with this thing. And, uh, but I guess there does come a date where you got to, you know, uh, fish or cut bait, as the old saying goes. And yeah. uh, the Big Ten decided to cut bait. Yeah, maybe they'll look like geniuses at the end. You know, yeah. maybe they're sitting there rooting for the other three to. Isn't that isn't uh, that horrible? <laughs> in, isn't that horrible to think about? It really is. I it mean, really is. it's kind of like coaches there in the last play of the game, the guy's trying a 48-yard field goal, and you're hoping he misses it. You know, <laughs> is that sportsmanship? No. Fail, son, fail. You know, I mean, that's not the way you should be taught to go through life, right? But 
That's where we are. <laughs> uh, it is where we are. Oh, Bill's character. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, again, I keep saying, I'm not sure it was the wrong vote, the wrong decision or right. I don't know. Uh, and I guess I'm, you know, I'd like to see more. And it was one thing that Lisa McCaffrey um, who has two kids playing, you know, uh, Luke at Nebraska quarterback and Dylan McCaffrey at Michigan. And she just said, you know, I think it just would be fair for the players who have a lot of questions to look at. And she said, maybe they would look at the data that the, that the commissioner and the presidents were consulting and say, you know what, this was the right decision. It would yeah. be for not to play. So, yeah. Um, so it's not like they're just being outraged and they got to play. They just want to know, they want to have an informed answer and uh, response, and I think that's kind of what we want, too. And you know what? That's what the coaches – I mean, the coaches wanted that, too. Yes. I think if the coaches had been sat down and go, hey, this is what I see. This is why we're not playing. Right. That didn't even happen with them. I mean, Ohio State didn't know it was playing Illinois in the season opener on September the 3rd until that day the schedule came out. So they yeah. lost, they literally lost a day of preseason camp because they could have well, started camp. You know what I mean? It's like – I mean, this, this whole thing has been – Interesting. But anyway, I don't think well, we talked anything you. here, Angelique, but I did get to have another conversation with you, which I always appreciate. Well, I just was going to say, it reminds me of what, when I was a kid, and sometimes there were sometimes my mother, I would say, well, why can't I do this? And she'd say, because I said so. Yeah. And that's it. And that's what this feels like. It's yeah. because I said so. And that's never satisfying. So yeah. I but, but, never yeah. find anything out. I said this on Walter Wall Sports the other night. You know, you, you hired – Kevin Warren to do things to make decisions like this, and he made one. I mean, so, you know, if you don't like that, you know, maybe change the decision maker. Otherwise, you go yeah. along with the flow. And uh, and you a, a, a fellow has to feel like he has that unilateral res- responsibility in the final analysis mm-hmm. for the good of everybody. But, you know, and then, of course, everybody pointed out, well, his son's playing at Mississippi State. <laughs> right. right. I mean, that that's the one thing that, that all the parents I've talked to, they keep coming back to that. Yeah, and they've had those heart-to-heart talks with their kids like, you know, he had, et cetera. Right. So that's what really, I think, has really rankled folks. But uh, It has. It has. Anyway. It's sort of like, you know, I would say, hey, son, I need some help here. So I, I would appreciate it if you don't play because mom and dad don't believe in, in playing. Yeah, right. yeah exactly. That hasn't happened. You're right. That has rankled a lot of people. Well, ladies and gentlemen, rankled, that's a good word to end this podcast Yes, on. it is. And, uh, Angelique Shingelis, whose mom makes the best baklava known to man, yes, and does. I'm taking I'm talking taking the Greek Isles Greek Isles into account there. Uh, <laughs> he makes uh, great baklava. Yes, she does. Oh my goodness, uh, <laughs> my mouth started watering there, but because uh, she does uh, layer, I call it uh, miniature layer cakes. But uh, <laughs> but I digress. Uh, Angelique, thanks for joining me again. Thanks, I too. really appreciate you coming on my podcast when you do and. Uh, Thanks for Roger Federer for me there looking over your shoulder. You know, yeah. he had changed expression. He has not been moved by our argument. I know, I know. <laughs> but that's why he's a great championship champion. Like a great quarterback. Doesn't get up, doesn't get too low. He's, you know, he's up, even. Up 40 love or down 30 <laughs> love, he doesn't change. No, he doesn't. <laughs> what do you think? Is Kevin Warren up 40 love or down 30 love? Well, I would... <laughs> yeah, I think he's I think he's down. <laughs> down 30 love. Well, we'll see. Yeah, if I don't think can... he has the advantage right now. We'll, we'll see if in the final analysis he's the one serving aces. But ladies and gentlemen. Right, right. But ladies and gentlemen, until, until the next time, this is Tim May thanking Angelique Shingelis for coming on the Tim May podcast. We'll see you next time.